And this is dedicated to yesterday's show. We talked a little bit about Ethereum. There was somebody in the chat saying that Ethereum gas prices were too high. And then after I checked the comments and there was, I forget his name, but he was defending Ethereum. So we're going to spend a, about a minute here just trashing Ethereum because they deserve it. <laughs> so this first one, this first one's a little bit more of a joke, but funny. So this is the Ethereum. I don't know what you'd call them, users. Nice little rainbow there. Got a spaceship, a unicorn on his shirt. <laughs> and there's the Ethereum roadmap. Your fiat into my pockets. <laughs> I don't know where this is from. I found it on Nostra, I think, but had to share it this morning. Good summary of Ethereum. But then the actual, that's just kind of a joke. But then we'll look at the actual. This is from Fidelity, I believe. They put out a little bit of a document explaining the difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum. And this was included in that document. So I think it's important to highlight this for anybody who's out there holding Ethereum. And I think that even though Ethereum hit 3000 bucks yesterday, there's lots of excitement around it right now. I was watching a video from about a year ago or two years ago, and the price of Bitcoin at that time was about 45,000 US. And the price of Ethereum at that time was 4,000 US. So don't pay attention to the, the Ethereum fiat conversion, pay attention to the Bitcoin and Ethereum conversion. So this is some information I wanted to share between the two protocols. So first of all, Bitcoin uses the proof of work protocol, which is a big factor. Ethereum used to, but last year, I believe it was, or a year and a half ago, Ethereum switched to proof of stake, which is not as cool. The pre-genesis block supply, Bitcoin was zero, which means that every single Bitcoin that has been mined since block number one has been done, has been earned using the proof of work protocol through Bitcoin mining. Satoshi did not invent Bitcoin and then issue himself a bunch of coins. Every coin that's been mined, every coin that's been earned has been done using proof of work. Ethereum, before they started mining Ethereum, there was 72 million Ethereum that was dished out to the inner circles of Ethereum. Mostly that weird looking dude, uh, Vitalik. And I think the World Economic Forum probably got a nice little, little supply of Ethereum. The circulating supply currently of Bitcoin is 19,433,000. I think this is a little bit old, but anyways, it's close to that. I think it's about 19.6 million right now. And with Ethereum, it's 120 million circulating supply. The total supply of Bitcoin fixed at 21 million, whereas Ethereum, there's no limit on it. There's no fixed amount, infinity. So I want to share that because that is important knowledge to have, I think, in your back pocket. As mentioned yesterday, I think that a lot of people get into Ethereum strictly because they think that they can get more for it because it's cheaper compared to Bitcoin. But they don't really consider these, the supply and the total supply into that equation. So that's that. Good morning, Daniel. That is today's why not to buy Ethereum with your. <laughs> okay, let's keep things rolling here because we're having a, 